Traveling this bending road is always an adventure, and I'm glad we can do it together. It's easier together because no matter where we go in life, two things are for certain. One, you will eventually come to a bend in your road, and two, God will always see you through. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and click the subscribe button so that you know when I upload my next video. In this way, we travel together and we encourage each other along the way. Hi, welcome to The Bending Road. Glad you could join me today. I'm getting settled in my new place and I'm really excited about this. This is my new office. And um, I think Dave and I are getting, getting things worked out. We actually got our new driver's licenses and so forth. And um, we're settling in. I think we got most of our boxes unpacked, few left to go, but you know how that goes. After a while, it'll all, everything will find its place. So yeah, we've been here for a week now and um, things are settling in. We're kind of, we're kind of pleased about that. I, I happened to say to him last night, I'm, I'm glad I'm not, you know, not having to worry over the things that we worried over at camp and the things that, um, you know, going out in the middle of the night to go into the camper to use the bathroom and sort of thing. And I mean, it's nice to have a real house. It's nice to have real running water. It's nice to have a laundry room. I love the laundry room. The house is really, really comfortable. And um, we are blessed uh, about how, how God saw us through the last couple of months, um, but we are very, very comfortable here too. It's been a good transition. Folks have been uh, really helpful. And as a matter of fact, the other day I, I posted on Facebook, hey, does anybody happen to have a desk? We got rid of a lot of things. Um, we got a lot rid of a lot of like bookcases and tables and extra furniture that we wouldn't be needing. And uh, a couple days later, there on the by the back door of the garage, there's there's a desk. We have a desk, and that God took care of that for us, and really, really appreciated um, the individual who who offered it to us and the individual who loaded it up and brought it to us. That was that was really super. Um, we're excited about um, things like. Without my income, we've been drawing off our savings uh, for the last couple of months to keep the car payment going and, and keep other bills taken care of, um, to buy things we needed. And, and even now with moving to a new state, there's a lot of expenses. Um, we had to be able to pay for the extra gas in order to, um, in order to move down here and the change of our driver's license and our car registration, boy, that's really expensive. Um, so we've been drawing off our, our savings, but now that I'm back to work, we're, we're thankful for that. We're grateful for a source of income and, um, praying that, that God helps us to, to replenish what we've used. Um, we feel like God is calling us to continue to live lightly, right? To to not spend money we don't need to spend, to be cautious about uh, buying things for the house that maybe we don't really need. You know, so I mentioned bookcases and a few tables, small tables to put things on, bed nights, night stands, that sort of thing. Um, we don't have those things and maybe we don't need them. And that's what we're going to, you know, try to find out. If we just don't replace those, how long do we go before we realize, hey, we didn't really need that in the first place. So anyway, so we're settling in and um, getting used to some things. But I said to Dave the other night, you know, I'm really, I'm really comfortable in this home and in this neighborhood, we're figuring out the, the area. Um, but we have to be careful. You see, for two and a half months, we really depended on God. We leaned into God, not knowing what our future was. We didn't know if I would have a job. We didn't know if I would get appointed to a church. We didn't know if we'd be able to replace that income that we were, that savings that we were 
um, spending. We didn't know if I would be able to find or afford health insurance and that sort of thing. So, so we really, really intensely depended on God. And now all of a sudden, it would be really easy to fall into that trap where we depend, depend on ourselves. You know, it's, it's this time where Satan will poke at, at you and, and say, Hey, do you really have enough? Don't you think you ought to buy this or that? Don't you think you really need this or that? You know, you sold that. You need to replace it. Or, Satan will keep his hands off and just let you get even more comfortable, right? Won't tempt you with anything. Will 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 let you will lull you into a sense of self dependency, where I'm I'm dependent on myself and my job to see us through, and I get I I really get uh, confident in that rather than in God. Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians um, in chapter 10. He talks about all that Israel went through and he talks about, you know, these are, this is a whole group of people who all came out of Egypt, all went through the Red Sea, all um, lived under the cloud, the cloud of, of God and the pillar of fire and, and were all with Moses in the cloud and in the Red Sea and so forth. They all drank from the rock and they all um, lived under the same um, experience of God. But God wasn't happy with all of them because some of them turned to idols. Some of them turned to sexual immorality. Some of them turned to um, indulging in revelry, um, eating and drinking at gluttony, right? And overdoing it. And, and, and it said that uh, people died, as they were grumbling and complaining and indulging in things they shouldn't. And, and Paul says in verse 11, these things happened to them as examples. They were written down as warnings for us. Yeah. These things happened to Israel and they were written down as warnings for us. And it says, if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Be careful that you don't fall. If you're getting overconfident in your ability to take care of yourself, if you're getting overconfident in your ability to uh, manage temptation and stay away from sin, be careful because we don't do those things on our own. We need to depend on God. And Israel kind of got a little self-reliant, we'll say. Uh, verse 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Everybody's been tempted. This is not new for you, right? There's nothing special about any one of us. There's nothing new for us. We've all been tempted. We all understand what that temptation is about. Um, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Sometimes we read that or we remember that trans, that, that verse and we think, oh, that's right. God isn't going to give us more than we can handle. Well, we had a lot that we didn't think we could handle over the last few months. But what this is actually talking about is temptation. God will always provide a way out. And, and I think one of the greatest ways out is not to depend on yourself. It's to lean on God, to continue to lean on God, to be, to continue to be thankful for that which God has done in your life, to, um, continue to be in the scripture, continue to remember where things came from and not to depend on self. God is faithful and he will not tempt you beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. I think what I'm hanging on to today is that verse 12. If you think you're standing firm, if you think you're standing firm, if I'm standing firm because now I have a job, now I have health insurance, now our cars are, are, are registered in Pennsylvania and all that's taken care of and, and, all of our stuff has moved and I finally have done the laundry and all that stuff is taken care of. If I start getting comfortable in that, I need to watch out. 
If you think you're standing firm, be careful you don't fall. It's God who we depend on. It's God who cares for us. It's God who provides for us. It is God who will take care of us if we have a job or if we don't have a job. It's God who we need to lean on, not ourselves. This, I said today and the other night, this could be a dangerous time for us. We need to be careful now not to rely on anything else but God. I hope I've encouraged you today uh, with this word. I, um, you know, I, I think really the best thing you could do at this point is read, get your Bible out, read 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 13. Read it a couple of times. Read the whole chapter. Read the chapter before. Get that into your, your heart, not just in your head, right? Because this is, this uh, verses um, 12 and 13 are really verses that we tend to misapply. So I would encourage you to read it, read it again, understand why he's saying these things and use this as a warning to yourself. I also want to encourage you to check out the pit stops. I've been putting pit stops on uh, every day, Monday through Friday. It's, it's just a one minute reading of scripture and just gives you a scripture to take a breath, meditate on, uh, take a minute to, to see what God is saying and um, take that break. Focus on God midday. God will have something to say to us. But so often we get busy and we just plow through our day. We need to take that little break. So I hope I've encouraged you. I hope you do check out those pit stops. If you haven't joined us for morning prayer, morning prayer is live at six o'clock, Monday through Thursday, and hope you join us for that. You can comment live and, and we can receive your prayer requests right then when we're praying. And, uh, or you can send us your prayer requests separately and we will include those in our prayer list. Have a great week and I will see you next week along the bending road. Thank you for watching, and thank you for working together along this journey. Connect with me on social media or on my website at bendingroad.weebly.com. Let me know how I can pray for you as you navigate the bend in your road. I pray that when you see the bend in your road, you will not be afraid, but will take the hand of God and keep walking. You are not alone.